Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome to Posey Lane. Today, I have a question for you. Did you ever collect anything when you were a kid? Please let me know in the comments if you did. For me, I liked collecting erasers and I liked collecting rocks. And there was something about having a lot of the same thing that was really cool to me. I'd go to the store and I'd look for the shiniest, prettiest rocks and I'd put them all in a box I kept in my closet and I'd bring them out and look at them and organize them and then I put them back in my closet and there's just something so fun about having a lot of the same thing. And today's craft is kind of like that. We're gonna be making a sensory bin with this storage bin and there's gonna be lots of little things for kids to play with. Now this craft, I saw something similar online and I don't know about you, but when I see something like this, I kind of like, I wanna challenge myself to make this too. I think I can make it. So that's what we're doing today is we're seeing how well we can make one ourselves. For our sensory bin, we're gonna make our own homemade DIY kinetic sand. And for that, we're gonna need sand. And this is just play sand from the Home Depot. And I said the Home Depot. And this is just sand from Home Depot play sand. It was a 50 pound bag for less than four bucks. And then we need something to mix it in. And this is just a dish pan from the dollar store. Cornstarch, oil. This is canola oil, but really I think any oil would work. That's just what I had in my pantry. And then we need some baggies to put the sand in once it's done and a half cut measuring cup. For our sensory bin, we're going to be doing a road construction theme because when I went searching for different little fun things to put in it, I found some cool things at the dollar store that went along with the road construction theme. So the most important thing that we need is a storage bin that has different sections for us to put our things in. And this I found at Walmart. We're gonna be making our own little road construction signs that you can stick in the sand. And for that, we're gonna need construction paper in red and yellow, scissors, some clear packing tape, and toothpicks. For the things that I found at the dollar store, I found a cute little car and this little road construction set. I also found a fake Jenga set and some rocks. And that's all you need. We're going to be cutting out our road signs. And what I love about road signs is how they're very simple shapes that are recognizable without even having to put any words on them. Like if you see it, you know it's a stop sign or a yield sign. So our first one is going to be road work signs. And we're just gonna cut out two yellow squares that we'll use for the road signs. And when I was cutting them out, I was thinking, oh, is a road sign like road work warning? Is it yellow or is it orange? And I Googled it and the answer was yes, it's both. It can be orange or yellow. So I'm wondering what color is it where you live? I'm using packing tape to laminate the road signs. I want to protect them. I don't want moisture to get into them and for them to rip and tear. I want them to last for at least a little bit. So I decided just to use some packing tape to kind of seal it. I don't have a laminator, but man, that would be like goals to have a laminator. That would be awesome. So I'm just going to lay down a piece of tape and put the yellow square onto it. And then I'm going to fold the tape over it and kind of create a seal. Then I'll cut the edges out and just leave a little bit of the tape around the edges so that it stays sealed and moisture won't get in. I've noticed that road signs are usually at a diagonal, so I'm just gonna put the squares at a diagonal and then tape the toothpick to it. going to do a red yield sign too. That's just something that's really recognizable and easy to cut out. So I'm just going to cut out a triangle and then I'll laminate it just like the other signs and put a toothpick on the back. Some people are road trip people and some people aren't. And I'm a road trip person. I love going on adventures and going on the road. For me, when I was little, to kind of keep the time going, I would play road sign bingo. And it usually take me a few hours to find all the different road signs and actually get a bingo. I 
didn't take much to make these. They were very quick and very easy, but they look really cute and I think they'll be really fun to use in the bin. The recipe for the DIY kinetic sand is super easy. Like you could almost memorize it. It's in like no time flat. It's so easy. It's a five to three to one ratio. And what I mean by that is it's five scoops of sand to three scoops of cornstarch to one scoop of oil. And for our recipe, we're gonna use a half cup measuring cup as our scoop, and that will make enough for the bin. Cornstarch is really fine, so it makes a lot of dust. So I recommend mixing all of this outside because then you keep the mess outside your house and not in, and then you don't have to clean up as much. For the cornstarch, we're gonna be doing three scoops. And so for this recipe, three scoops is one and a half cups of cornstarch. We're now adding the oil, which is one scoop and that comes out to half a cup for this recipe. And the great thing with the oil, once it's incorporated in, is that the sand will now be able to stick to each other and we can form cool things like roads or mounds or walls or whatever we wanna make. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to mix it all together and get our hands messy. So we just wanna make sure that we're mixing in all the cornstarch and all the oil and all the sand so it basically looks just like wet sand. Play sand from the store when you open it up is wet and we need it dry for the recipe. So I went on and opened it up and put five scoops of the sand, which equals about two and a half cups into a bin and let it dry. And it takes about six to eight hours to let it dry. This reminds me of building sand castles on the beach when I was little. I don't know what kind of kid you were, but for me, I really would rather build sand castles on the beach than go into the water. I think it had something to do with like getting the salty water in my eyes and it burning. I just didn't really like that. So for me, I wanted to spend hours building tank castles. What kind of kid were you? Did you like getting into the ocean and boogie boarding and all of that? Or were you really more into building tank castles on the beach? Let me know in the comments. I'm really happy with how this kinetic sand turned out. It's a little bit different than the store-bought kinetic sand, but I love how well it sticks together. So it'll be really fun to build things like walls and roads and mounds. I found the sensory bin at Walmart and I didn't find it in any craft section or toy section. I actually found it in the hunting and fishing section. There were several different sizes when I was looking down the aisle and I got one that was bigger because I wanted to make sure it was tall enough to fit the toy trucks in. The storage bin was less than five bucks. It reminds me kind of a, a tackle box when I used to go fishing when I was a kid. started cutting out the dividers with scissors, but then I noticed that any little plastic tab left meant the divider wasn't going to fit. So I ended up using an X-Acto knife and cutting all that little extra plastic off. I already put the sand into two different sandwich baggies and divided it up. And it looks like that both of them will fit perfectly right in the front. I found that not all dollar stores carry the same stuff. They're not all created equal and some have better stuff than others. So I ended up having to go to two stores because I wanted to find the finger blocks, which are the fake Jenga blocks. And my fir the first store I went to didn't have them, but the second store had a whole row of them. I opened up the road construction playset, and when I looked at the playhouse, I realized it didn't fit. So you know what? Toss it out. I don't totally have a plan for where I'm going to stick everything, but I think that just staggering the items and putting similar things in different spots will just look really good. And I know this is for kids, but hey, I'm doing this for me too, and I want it to look good. When you're looking for things to fill up your bin, I wanna encourage you to look on aisles maybe that you don't expect. I went to the dollar store, and when I went, I looked in the party section, I looked in the toy section, I looked near the craft area, and then I also went down like the floral aisle and ended up buying a couple vase fillers. I ended up using the rocks, which were vase filler. And then I used the finga or fake jinga blocks and I used the toy trucks and the road signs we made and I just placed them down and I put dividers as I went, just wherever I felt like I needed it. 
One thing I realized is that the dividers didn't always want to go in so well, and sometimes I had to use a little bit of force to get them in. Now I'm going to let my son see it, because if we're being honest, he's the real critic. He's the one here that's going to actually play with it. My son had a ton of fun playing with it. We put it into a bin so that it wouldn't make a huge mess. And he made a, like a roadway and he built a little house out of the blocks for the road signs. And then he made a roadway for the two trucks and kind of patted that area down and then stuck the other signs in and it just looks so cute. This row construction sensory bin actually came out a little bit bigger than the sensory bins I had seen online, but you know what? I think that bigger is always better. I love how it's all these compartments, so you know like if something's missing, you can go look for it and you'll know that everything is here. I also really like how it's flat when it's all together and it's all contained in one box and I can stack it on top of other things in the closet and it's easy just to put away when you're done with it. One thing that I've done with my kids is I'll get toys of theirs and put them away for a while and then when I bring them back out it's like it's a whole brand new toy and there's this new interest and excitement in it and so that's something that we can do with this is just put it away and then when you bring it out again it's like it's a whole brand new toy. Thank you guys for joining me today and I really can't wait for us to make something else again next week. Oh,